I am here with Mark Forgione of American Cut in Tribeca and now in Midtown. Thank you so much for having me. Here. Welcome. Welcome so, to our new home. I know, it's beautiful. So today we're going to be talking about something that is pretty exciting and decadent, which is surf and turf. And we have your signature surf and turf here. Yeah. First of all, what do we have in front of us? This is amazing. But I had a funny feeling right. that steak and here. lobster would, chili lobster would probably go well also. And it was one of those things, you know, chefs out there can understand sometimes you make something once and you, you know, don't have to change a thing. We got it. Take chili lobster, put it on top of a tomahawk, surf and turf. And you're done. You know, the thing that I like about American Cut, under one roof, you can have the classic steakhouse meal or a chili lobster on top of a tomahawk. Right. And I think that with, you know, surf and turf, it's good to be classic, but it's also good to always add more flavor. Right. So, you know, we have the chili lobster. Are there other flavors that you think for people who are like, all right, I want to do the lobster and I want to do the steak as kind of a classic combination. What are other flavors that you can add into it so it doesn't feel boring? Right. Um, well, something that is very classic with steak, it's called maitre d' butter. Um, you know, very common. Pretty much every steakhouse in the world uses it. But instead of poaching the lobster or finishing the lobster with just regular butter and lemon, Try the Mater D butter. That's actually what we do if someone requests a more classic take on steak tartare. Um, you know, you can also flavor your butters with uh, different types of things. You know, when you're when you're putting the drawn butter on the on the stove, yeah. you know, throw in some herbs and some spices and you know citrus and and all those kind of things, and then strain it right before you serve it with the lobster on the side. And can you go too far with that? Because obviously, while steak is not delicate, you know. Seafood can be delicate, so are there certain things that you tend to avoid? I don't know if there's certain things I tend to avoid, but I think the reason that people are so drawn to the chili lobster this is, is that it's so outside the norm of what your palate is used to eating lobster with. Right. So I don't know if I necessarily avoid anything when it comes to lobster, but if I can give advice, it's sometimes, you know, yes, don't be afraid to, you know, to kind of to kind of go out there a little bit. Mm. And so obviously the classic combination is steak and lobster, but surf and turf really can be any meat with any seafood. So what combinations do you think work well? Oxtail with, with scallops. Um, we've done shrimp and grits uh, with bacon, which if you really break it down is yes. surf and turf. Um, um, I've done monkfish with braised short ribs. You know, the whole cheese and seafood thing. Mm. You know, one of, uh, one of our most famous dishes uh, from years past is this barbecue baked oyster that has, of all the cheeses in the world, it has pepper jack cheese on it. Why? Yeah. On paper? I mean, you know, a chef that kind of takes pride in what they do, I would never put pepper jack on oysters. Yeah. It's delicious. So, we do it. And then what about lighter fish? You know, when I think about certain seafoods that are a lot lighter, what, would you, what meat do you think typically pairs well, you know, the lighter that you go? Um, well, we've done a we've done a dish where it's kind of a, a surf and turf appetizer, which you don't see a lot. Yeah. Um, but um, we take uh, American wagyu and we make like a carpaccio out of it, and then kind of side by side, we'll we'll alternate with um, a hiramasa, and then we'll finish it with like a you know a brown butter and some fresh citrus and all that kind of stuff. And the textures, once you pound them out like that, are actually kind of similar. Um, you just get a different in the, you know, in the, the gaminess from the, the wagyu and the freshness of the fish in the hiramasa, and it was kind of fun. Um, so it's finding the similarities. Yeah. I mean, steak tartare and caviar, I think, is yeah. one of the one of the cooler and most delicious uh, combinations that you can that you can go with. And, and then also, again, you know, I think sometimes with some of these dishes, the timing important as well because you know, with most meats, it's important to let it rest. You know, with seafood, you tend to serve it all at once. Mm -hmm. So, is that an important part of presentation as well? Is kind of getting the timing. If I can give any advice, the meat can rest and you know recover or whatever you want to call it a lot better than the lobster or the seafood, you know, it's really hard to bring seafood back once it's right. gone over. You can always reheat a steak a lot easier than, than the seafood. Wonderful. Well, Mark, thank you so much for teaching us about surf and turf. And obviously, if you want to try it for yourself and not make it, you know where to find it here <laughs> at American Cut. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. <laughs>